poem of the day for Wednesday the 25th of March is um, Sonnet 116 by William Shakespeare. Um, this poem is a sonnet as its title implies and Shakespeare obviously wrote um, a great many sonnets over his lifetime. Sonnet was a very popular verse form in the 15th, 16th, 17th century. Um, generally a love poem. All sonnets have 14 lines. Shakespearean sonnets um, and all sonnets have quite strict rhyme schemes and form structures. Um, Shakespearean sonnets tend to be made up of three quatrains, so that's three four-line verses, which have an ABAB pattern. So we see that in Minds, Love, Finds, Remove, with the half rhyme there of Love and Remove. Um, and then you see Mark, Shake and Bark, Take and Cheeks, Come, Weeks, Doom. You've got come and doom there as a half rhyme again. And then they end with a rhyming couplet, proved and loved here. Um, some of these rhymes we call half rhymes now because proved and loved don't exactly rhyme. It would have to be proved and loved or proved or um, proved and loved in order for them to rhyme. But remember that we don't know exactly how words were pronounced in Shakespearean times. Um, so they may well have pronounced it proved instead of proved. Um, and therefore it would have been a full root full rhyme, we just see it as a half rhyme now. Um, so it has a very strong rhyme structure, usually written in iron bit pentameter, the de dum de dum de dum de dum de dum pattern, the heartbeat pattern uh, with ten syllables per line. This sonnet specifically is all about um, real love lasting forever and nothing can shake it. Um, you see that um, it looks on tempests and is never shaken, so it, a storm can't shake it. Um, a bark is a ship, so it's the star to every wandering bark, means it um, lights the way for every ship, um, or it is the compass, the true north to every ship, because obviously um, seafaring men used to um, judge their distance and their um, direction by the stars. Um, and then you've got the idea of time um, as a personified being. Um, and love not being the fall of time, because uh, even though rosy lips and cheeks may fade, so beauty may fade, love carries on all the time, and love doesn't alter even though your face may alter. Um, and then in the last couplet, Shakespeare's really saying, um, this is true, I know this to be true, and I'm so sure that basically he says at the end, if this isn't true, then it means I never writ anything, and no man, no man ever has ever loved before, which of course we know is not true, and therefore this must be true. So it's Shakespeare's absolute certainty that true love lasts forever and nothing can beat it. So this is Sonnet 116. Let me not to the marriage of true minds admit impediments. Love is not love which alters when it alteration finds, or bends with the remover to remove. Oh no, it is an ever-fixed mark that looks on tempests and is never shaken. It is the star to every wandering bark whose worth's unknown, although his height be taken. Love's not time's fool, though rosy lips and cheeks within his bending sickle's compass come. Love alters not with his brief hours and weeks, but bears it out even to the edge of doom. If this be error and upon me proved, I never writ, nor no man ever loved.